long run, uh, but it's getting to a moment where we uh, really going to kick it up. It's the Joomla volunteer portal. Um, we all got involved at some point in a Joomla project. And for me, it was when we go back to my town where I live, that's Amsterdam. I live in Wesp, a, a nice uh, small city uh, alongside a river. And um, I rode there over this water as well, um, over the Vecht, it's called. Um, and we practice each week. Uh, and in the end of the season, we have a rowing match around Pampas, which is not too far from my home. Um, but there is a race where we go three times a weekend around Pampas. And Pampas has been built in uh, the year 1300 and was mainly there. And nowadays it looks like this, um, a small island, nothing special. But it was used a long time ago for when uh, or sail ships that sailed over the entire world get back to Amsterdam, uh, but had to wait before they can go into Amsterdam to get their uh, goods out of board. But at the time there was a kind of issue because um, the people were getting back home, but had to wait for a couple of days. And during those days, uh, they get annoyed, bored, so they start to drink. And before they even get back home, they spend all their money they earned by traveling all around the world uh, before they arrived in Amsterdam. So the issue was that more and more families said, you won't go sail sailing the entire world because uh, you get home with nothing. So you can better be here and work on the farm rather than go out. So they thought, what can we do around that? Um, so they made sure that all boats have to be there before going to Amsterdam. And then they brought in beers and women. And that was all paid by the companies. And there's where a saying comes from that's called four pumpus, liggen, laying. So it means totally wasted, totally drunk because the people in two days were totally drunk because all beers were free and things like that. And then they sent the boat over to Amsterdam. And because they were already drunk, they go directly back home rather than spending the money in Amsterdam. Um, so that's also the name of my rowing team. I'm rowing since 2012, uh, 2002 uh, in wooden boats. And uh, our rowing race is around that small island each end of the year. And about 140 boats join this race, and it looks pretty uh, cool. And sometimes it can uh, be uh, windy with some high waves, uh, sometimes really easy. But but anyway, after such practice, we like to drink a beer. We deserve it, we think. Um, but yeah, you know, someone has to pay it, and sometimes that person paid the other time the other. So we had to have that in a sheet. And this is already a very old one. So we record everybody what was drinking. Um, at the time, I was playing around a bit. I was still in the, in the secondary school. But thought, I'm getting a big bit of bored because I created this sheet, but send it out by email all the time. Uh, hey, you have to pay something in our general uh, bill. So I thought, let's create a website on it. So I did. And it was a really uh, simple website, which started with only that, but later on, we added some pictures. And yes, it was built with front page. You started with it yeah. as well. <laughs> Who didn't in the end? You. I didn't. <laughs> I started with Paradox Database. <laughs> yeah. So that brings me directly to the, the next point, database. How does that work? Uh, at this time, it was just a front page website. And you remember the ones that we on the websites with front pages. How do you really update those links dynamically when you add a new page? Um, so there was a, uh, there is still a large website in the Netherlands called Nupinal News Website. But I was like, I can't imagine that each time they put a new news article on the website, they have to really go to all those pages and update the HTML. So I started looking into it because I didn't have any clue what the name of that is. So I found out there was something that's called like Cute News. And Cute News was a kind of system where you can really dynamically build your website, but still without any database. And that was really uh, useful because I hosted the website on some kind of free Lycos web hosting account. It doesn't even exist anymore. But after that, I had my first kind of content management system website. But still, 
keep exploring it. And then I came across Mambo during the summer of 2005. And that was really interesting. Uh, so I started building my website. And just when I finished my website, Mambo was forked. Thanks, Mr. Thiemann. Uh, so I had to create my website in Joomla or migrate it. But at that time, I was just very happy that I just finished my first website. So it was a kind of complicated thing. But in the end, I managed. So this was my first ever Joomla website. And it was pure for the hobby. But what I discovered when building this website, that there was an entire community around that piece of software, which was really helpful. And almost any question I had was already asked before and answered. And if I had a new question, a lot of people jumped in directly to help me in finding the answers. So uh, I really like that idea that a group of people are involved in helping out each other and building software and project community around it. And I ended up to get more and more involved with the local community in the Netherlands. So we uh, started back in 2008 a new local community. We kind of forked our local one at that time, kind of Mambo Joomla, but then locally. Um, and uh, also got involved with organizing the Joomla days. It's really dark in here, it was not really. Um, so in 2008, I joined my first ever Joomla day and I really liked it. So I think a month after that, I went to my first Joomla day outside the Netherlands. It was the one in UK and he was not there. I was in Denmark. <laughs> Denmark, no, not this one. It's a really longer time. Oh, uh, Maidstone. Uh, so there was a bunch of people standing in front of the room and those were the core development team. They were developing, uh, you probably see it in my screen better, but uh, Ryan Ozimek, Chris Davenport, yeah. Alex Kempis, uh, Wilco Janssen, Arno Zelstra, uh, Louis Landry, Hannes Papenberg, uh, they were all there. So it was for me like, wow, this is really cool, like all around the world people are working with it and trying to make Joomla better. And, uh, developing the software, but also the community. So that really most, motivated me to, to continue with that. And, wow, this is really... Uh, meanwhile, we started Joomla user groups in the Netherlands as well. And uh, Anja also organized uh, the one in uh, Rotterdam. Um, and we have, meanwhile, 14 of them. And most of them meet each month. But we have a great group of people there motivating each other to continue with doing a lot of things. So we organize... Um, parties around the celebration of Joomla 1.6 release. Um, and that slowly we had, to, yeah, we have a lot of people that are doing their own thing. So let's see if we can do, create a foundation in the lens to support both the Joomla day and the local community. Um, so started that as well. And, be and because of all the things going on, uh, I slowly got involved with the international community as well. So back in uh, 2011, I was asked to join the community leadership team as well. And the Joomla project has a kind of unique structure at the moment. Like in my rowing boat, we have eight people that are really rowing. But the one that's deciding which direction we're heading is a steersman. But basically in a Joomla project, we don't have that person. Uh, we all only have the people rowing. Uh, so we have a group of people, and this is uh, from uh, Jane Beyond a couple months ago with the entire leadership team, but that consists out of three different teams. The first team is Open Source Metis, which is uh, taking care of uh, the trademark, uh, the financial part of the project. Um, so they're mainly the, the foundational part behind it. And then we have the production leadership team, and I guess one guy is missing, which is sitting over here. <laughs> you were not there? No. Um, so this is the production leader team. Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> so Michael should be here. <laughs> or in the middle then. <laughs> no, so this is the production leadership team. And the production leadership team is taking care mainly about the development of the Joomla itself. So the code, but also about, um, for example, the issue directory, the reporting, the books, the documentation. Uh, so more the, the software part of the project. And then we have the community leadership team. And I'm part of that as well. And the community leadership team is taking part of basically everything else. So the Joomla forums, the user groups, uh, the extensions directory, uh, a lot of the subsites we have in the Indian Joomla project. So that's where the Joomla community leadership is responsible for. But the community is a big group of people. And it was the first Joomla World Conference uh, in uh, San Jose, the US. And 
that was really a great experience. We already had Jane Beyond, but uh, at the other side of the ocean, a lot of other people were also working on it, so it was great to meet them as well. And a lot of people are really willing to help. So I know um, you, you have volunteered for Joomla as well. I, we talked yesterday about your project, which you're going to do presentation, right? Yeah. Uh, so we all experience with volunteering for Joomla. But a lot of people, when I started as well, I tried to find my own way, but a lot of people think uh, they don't really know where to start or how can you help. And um, we have a lot of different communication channels. We have uh, Skype chats, uh, we have mailing lists, we have forums, we have email, we have uh, nowadays Slack, we have, you can continue with that. A lot of different communication ways, but most of them are not really that open. So you don't really know what's going on with all different teams and if you're maybe interested to help out. So um, this is one of the, the big, bigger Skype chats. All involved people are jumping in. But you, you know, you have to be in that Skype chat to know what's going on there. And it's an old screenshot, so. <laughs> Sorry? The, okay. You said? Yes, you, still have, you have to still be involved in Joomla. Yeah. Yeah, before you know where, you, I mean, you have to be invited to the Skype chat. So it's, it's really not that open. But on the other hand, I think we have a lot of people that uh, are willing to help. And we don't really have a good overview of what's, who's doing what, what area needs support, things like that. So it's really hard to get uh, an overview of the status of things. So how's the progress? What are the deadlines? Uh, do we need to support? And we also say, like, we're really open. But are we really open when we communicate for you via Skype? I don't think so. Um, so we're helping, saying we need help and you can help as well. But ha do we really have clear uh, signs or guidelines how people can join and really help? And it's also good to know who are our volunteers. I mean, it was great to talk with you yesterday to hear about your project, but it's because I'm here, I know that you're doing that. But it would be great if there are other ways as well to know what people are working on or maybe need help with, or how the project can support them. And that's really hard now. So also, who do we need to contact locally? So if we want to organize something where, who can we reach out? We don't have a good overview of the, the people around the world. But mainly, and that's one of the, the, the most important things, I think, is to be able to say thank you to the people that are volunteering to the project. And we don't say that enough. We should do that much more often. And it's just, a very two word two words in English, but even a lot of language, just one word, but it should be said much more often. So what happens? People are frustrated. They can't get things done. Uh, they don't feel acknowledged for their contribution to the project, and they leave. And when they leave, they take their knowledge with them. So sometimes there is some documentation about what people have been working on, what are the, the things, the, pro the status of things, but most of the times, when people move, the knowledge moves as well. So new people joining in have to do it all over again because we're missing that. So here's the idea. We uh, are going to create a Joomla volunteer portal. And uh, that volunteer portal will have several parts. So one of them is a volunteer profile. And you sign up as a volunteer. And it shouldn't be too complicated, but you can add like your skills, uh, your experience. Um, you can see on what working groups you're involved, actively involved with. Um, you can earn some badges or whatever things that say thank you for what you've been doing. Um, we, we can have uh, an overview of both what you're doing internationally, but also locally in local communities. Um, we can have your contact details so we know how we reach out to, to people in the community. Um, and then we have the working groups, so the teams that are working on specific areas. So we have a lot of teams like the marketing team. Um, I will just show in a second, but those teams that will be a place where people can uh, discuss or at least find the meeting notes of meetings that have been taking place. What action points needs to be worked on? So we have to do this and this. Who's going to do that? Uh, before what date? So we can track about the process. Um, 
And by allowing this, by, by seeing which working groups are there, we maybe, when you're browsing the site, oh, that's something that has my interest. I know something about it. I have experience in it. I can share this with the community because I know that. Uh, and of course, another important aspect is having documentation in there as well. So everybody that's working in a certain working group knows what are the processes, uh, what, uh, what can be done, what, what are the rules around it. So, for example, we have uh, the Joomla marketing group. Uh, we have uh, the social media team. We can have a group around Joomla Day organization so people can share their knowledge and experience in organizing Joomla Day. We have the Joomla research directory team. Uh, we have a, a group of people that are interested in getting uh, women involved in Joomla. So we create a place where people can start working on ideas to make it happen. So when we have that in one place, we have a kind of uh, volunteer dashboard where you can see yourself a stream of the activity of the groups you're involved with. So you don't have to check all those channels, but it can be in one place. So you can see a kind of overview of what's coming up. You can see what deadlines you signed up for and what are the actual dates that the deadline is set to. Um, and uh, there can be a kind of button like, what can I help with? Uh, and you get suggestions from the site because it knows what tasks are available, so where you can help. Um, getting started page, that's really interesting. So people are going to the volunteer portal, how do I get started with helping out in a project? So that can be like, uh, the, the game rules we have in a, in a, in a community, like the more the, how do you respect each other and uh, how do you communicate in a clear way. Um, and it's really a step-by-step, -step really taking people by the hand and then getting them involved in the community. And of course, there's some general uh, community activity overview, like, uh, um, like uh, who's been working on what? Uh, who earned a new badge, for example? And we can highlight a volunteer of the month. Uh, we can have like leaderboards. I know Brian Tiemann really likes those things. Uh, that's that's makes it. Human, Sorry. A new one. Okay. Yeah. When the old one is disabled now. But but for some people it really motivates when they see okay I'm number four on a certain list of of uh, contributions I made. I want to get to the number one position. Uh, so all those kind of things that can motivate people we can work on. Um, but it also provides us community insights, so mainly about who's doing what and what needs to be helped. So the main goal of the volunteer portal is to, to match the task with the volunteers. So we have one big bunch of tasks that needs to be done, and it can be a very, very small one. We need to get a text translated, or we need a small graphic design. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, we have a lot of volunteers. But right now, the volunteers don't know which tasks are available, and we don't know which volunteers can uh, work on a task, so let's match them. Um, it should be easier and more fun to volunteer. Less frustration, more fun, more acknowledgement. Uh, provide insights in the works that are being done, which group are working on what, so you also know what other groups are working on, so maybe it's tied in something you, your team is working on, so make sure you get in line with that team um, and, may, and don't duplicate the efforts in that. And of course, increase the number of volunteers and also the productivity of the volunteers that are involved. And above all, recognize the ones that are really doing a lot for our project. So how can that look like? For example, uh, the contribute page. You uh, set your available time. So I have five or 15 minutes or I have an hour. Uh, my skills are like the graphic designer. And then you show the suggestions that needs to be done. For doing that task. Yeah, of course. This, this is just a, 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 a lot of things needs to be discussed around it, but it just a, to give an impression like the website is providing you suggestions, what you can do when you say, I have time right now, I have now an hour, what can I do? And it can be really task in a system, but if you say, for example, like uh, 10 minutes and there are no suggestions for that, we can have provide some general suggestions. Go to the forum, answer a forum post. Uh, go to the uh, issue tracker, make sure you test the bug because this one needs to test it. So um, really providing that directly into one place. And the other area is of course groups. So an overview of all the working groups we have in our community. And again, this is just <laughs> an example, but to give an impression. And then when you open a group, you see uh, the task and the status of that or the discussions or the files or the documentation. You can find it at one place so you can 
link people to one place where they find all information. Um, and of course, see who are the members involved and uh, what are who, the, the team leader who's responsible for it in the end and how can I reach out to that person? There's a lot of John Doe in there. Sorry? Yeah, a lot of John Doe. Yeah, it's amazing how many John Does we have in the project. <laughs> So, and you're, of course, your own volunteer profile or for any volunteer where you can see an overview of the tasks you sign up for, uh, your achievements, uh, or maybe you can share a bit of your Joomla story so people get to know you a bit, know your background. Uh, it, it's always fun to read about other Joomla stories. So we have to build this, and we have to build this together with the community. And uh, we're going to start pretty soon with this. Uh, and we have an amazing project where, and this time is real, uh, we have an amazing project with so many people all around the world, and that's really unique of Joomla. Uh, anywhere you go, there are people and they're willing to help. And of course, we have some struggles with language barriers or cultural differences, but I think we can do with teamwork, we can achieve ma amazing things with the project. So we need people for that, uh, we need to make it happen, and we need you for that. And we need all kind of people to make this happen. And it can be, is it showing up? Yeah. Translation or marketing is pair or a front end developer, a back end developer. Uh, we want to build this uh, in Joomla and put it on GitHub so people can really, I want to make this portal better, go fix it, do a pull request. So if you're interested in helping out, please let me know directly, send me an email, uh, send me a tweet, and Together we're going to make it happen. Thank you for being a Joomla volunteer. So, any questions?